Hey my lovely WAP champs of the Anxiety Compass. How are you all doing today? Is anybody there? Is anybody watching? If you are there, jump on. Tell me that you're watching, say hello, and let me know how you are doing today on this rather lovely day. It's all right, it's not raining, so that's good. And um, I would like to invite you to um, share anything to do with the Anxiety Compass. If you've been finding it useful, help me help you. Um, it's really important that we grow this group because there's lots of useful tips and anxiety um, soothing tips and suggestions to help people with anxiety. So um, if you've been finding this group useful, do share. Anyway, if you don't know me, my name is Sally Garozzo and I help people overcome anxiety and depression without the use of medication through establishing a really good mind-body connection. And I do this through a powerful process called Rapid Transformational Therapy and through coaching and I also help people with public speaking overcome their fear of public speaking and to really love it and enjoy it. And I also help people to use their singing voices and to overcome mental and emotional blocks around their voices. So I am an anxiety specialist, an anxiety expert, you could say, because I have had and I still manage and navigate anxiety today. And um, today's live is all about celebrating your breakthroughs. It is part of, it's, it's part five of the intro series that I've been doing every Monday for the last few weeks, um, letting you know about the hashtags. So if you have been on here before, if you've not, read the pinned post after this live. And who's watching? Hey Rachel, lovely to see you. Excuse me, <clears throat> I've got a real croaky voice today. Um, yes, if you've not read the pinned post, go ahead and you will see that there are different hashtags with which to slot your posts into. You can use them or you can just go off piste, I don't mind, but I am doing these lives to let you know how to use the hashtags. A little bit more about what they mean to me so that um, you can learn from from some of the stuff that I have experienced. So today's hashtag is called proud of me. And it's all about those wins, celebrating your breakthroughs, those all important achievements um, that help to reinforce your growth. So, <laughs> hi, uh, hi Rachel. So just to let you know that I was born in the year of the cat. And like anybody that was born in the year of the cat, we love, love, love our comfort zones. So to me, this has been a real, real challenge to stretch my comfort zone and then celebrate those achievements. Um, because it's all part of the anxiety recovery process. And I'm not just saying this on a whim, I'm not like some kind of Anthony Robbins air punching kind of guru, it's not about that. It's about recovery from anxiety and the way through to the other side is um, through those difficult situations and to really stretch yourself. So, hey Mike, lovely to see you Mike. Um, I am interested to find out from you, what do you do to stretch your comfort zone and how do you celebrate those wins? So let me know, um, it's great if this is interactive um, I want you to feel safe and secure in the knowledge that, hey Mike, um, that I'm here listening, I'm here for you, I want to help you, I love anything to do with anxiety and depression, I know it sounds really weird, <laughs> but um, it's my thing, if you know what I mean. Um, right, okay, so let's get on with it. Um, five steps to getting out of your comfort zone. Step number one, here we go. Figure out what you are actually moving away from. Figure out what is frightening the pants off you. Figure out where you are resisting. Some, you know, sometimes this isn't obvious. We don't actually know what we are resisting. So it's all about getting honest and getting really real, rolling our sleeves up and figuring out what are we avoiding. Now, the mind is designed to protect you. 
So your mind will automatically move you away from situations that you think are fearful or that you think are not going to go well. Because that's what your mind does. It's designed to move you away from pain towards pleasure. So if you've had past wobbles or any kind of past experiences that you've freaked out over and you've linked pain to that, your mind is going to go, no, 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 I am not doing that again. So it creates this barrier and we avoid it like the plague. But those things keep us stuck, right? And stuckness perpetuates anxiety, right? So what are some of your fears? Let me know what some of your fears are. What do you resist? Where have you had panic attack? Or where have you experienced anxiety in the past? What triggers your anxiety? So it might be things like getting on a bus, it might be traveling, it might be spending time with new people, it might be speaking up at a meeting, it might be just getting out of the house and walking to the shop for some people. It might be, it might be um, deeper fears like fear of not having anybody there for you. It might be fear of loneliness. It might be um, fear of relationships or fear of commitment. Let me know what some of your fears are. And it's okay, you know, there's no judgment here. Nobody's going to judge you or criticise you or think any less of you for having a fear or a weird fear. In fact, I'm going to tell you what some of my fears are so that I can lead by example. So I have a fear around um, spending money, actually. <laughs> every time I, and this is a newish fear, um, every time I make a purchase, I can feel myself inside going, ooh. Um, I also have a fear of doctors. Um, it's not a crazy huge fear, it's just like something that I feel inside a little bit. I've managed to um, sort it out a bit now, so that's good. I also have some kind of businessy fears, fears around my business, some fears around growing my business. So they are there and there will always be fears, uh, you know, unless you don't have a physical body, <laughs> which I'm sure you do. So, um, you know, fears never go away. There's just like a level of fearage, you could say. There's like, um, you know, fears of public speaking and then there's like smaller fears, shall we say. Mike, you've said something. I found myself finding busy places harder to deal with more recently. Hang on, I'm just going to expand this. I've just got home from Brighton and reached a point where I had to get out. I'm also <laughs> petrified of the dentist. Sure, sure, completely understand and can actually relate to that myself. I've experienced agoraphobia where I don't want to go out. Um, busy places can be really overwhelming, especially if you're a sensitive soul, if you're very open and um, if you're like some kind of musician or artist, those kinds of people can be very empathic and then you end up picking up on everybody else's energy as well. So you've got to learn to protect your energy in that way. Um, so yeah, I, I do get it. And hopefully through this Facebook Live, it might help you with some um, suggestions. Um, okay, so where are we now? Um, yeah, getting real, getting honest, what is holding you back? What are you avoiding? Then, ask yourself, um, what would I be doing if I didn't have these fears? What would life be like? What do I want instead? And this is like training your mind to stop looking at the problem, to stop observing what is, even though what is might be really, really painful and really like you're really stuck in it. This is training your mind to look at what do you want instead? Focus your attention on that because this will be your motivation to get to the other side, right? This will be your driving force. This will be the rocket fuel up your bum <laughs> to get you to the other side, okay? And so it's, it's really important to get specific about this. What do you want to experience? Would you like 
more social connection? Would you like less isolation? Would you like more confidence in speaking up for yourself? Would you just like to be able to get on a bus, go into town, have a coffee and come back home? Would you like to be able to get in your car and drive somewhere? Would you like to be able to um, do, did I say public speaking? That's a big one, isn't it, for a lot of people? Or would you like to um, have less fear around spending money? Yes, I would. Rachel, what have you said? I don't enjoy some social situations, such as a party, and I don't really want to go, but I have, hang on, um, such as a party, I don't really want to go, but have to. I find excuses to avoid them as much as possible. After having a baby, I now have anxiety over my weight too. Yeah. So what my invitation to you, Rachel, is how do you want to feel instead at a party? And how would you like to feel about your body? How would you like to feel about food instead? Write those things down. Get your mind thinking more towards the positive than worrying and ruminating about what is, okay? This will be your motivation. So, step three in my magical process. Okay, now this seems obvious, but... Um, and undoable for a lot of people, but I'm gonna spout it off anyway. Step three, do it. Do the thing that scares you the most, okay? You do it in a way that is manageable to your own nervous system, okay? So for me, there is no point me doing a skydive right now. It it would just crucify me that, you know, it. I would probably die halfway down. <laughs> but there are certain things that I can do and I can practice managing them. So this is all about, I know this is counterintuitive, but this is, a, but this is what all of the, the manuals and the doctors and the anti-anxiety therapists will say to you, you have to practice being in those situations and coping. So, how do you cope? You accept, you accept, accept, accept the feelings that are arising, the need to want to get out of there, of that social situation, that need to um, want to get off the bus, that need to want to get off the tube, that need to want to get off the stage. You have to accept, accept, accept the feeling of fear. Keep accepting it. Keep breathing through it. So it's all about, you know, don't fight the way you feel. Don't resist too much. Allow the feelings to be there, allow the fear to be there. It's an outlet, it wants to come out, right? It's like having a damn wall up. The pressure will just keep building and building and building and building if you don't release the pressure. So you allow the feeling to be there, you surrender to it, you accept it. And you can almost, when you get good at this, you can almost welcome having a bit of an anxiety attack or a turn or a panic attack or whatever it is whatever words you give it, um, and then practice coping with it by doing your, your breathing, your mind mantras, you rationalize with yourself. Now there is a fantastic book that I've been reading called I Heart Me by David Hamilton, and in that book there are lots and lots and lots of ways to deal with these difficult situations. I definitely recommend breathing, rationalizing with yourself, and telling yourself the truth about a situation that you are safe. Unless there's a tiger looking at you, then run away. <laughs> um, so it's all about, now this, this piece of information is gold, and this is what athletes do, this is what people at the top of their game do. They move into that discomfort. They don't run away from the discomfort. They move towards it. Like any muscle, it can be trained because it's your nervous system and you can train it and um, you start to get used to it. But that's come, I'm coming into the next step there. So, um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, you move towards that, you move towards the pain, the fear, and you cope. And if you fail and you have to leave, that's fine too because it's actually not failure, it's just feedback. It's like, okay, so what did I do? 
what could I have done? What else could I have done in that situation? Okay. So, um, and then, blah, 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 blah. yes, I wanted to liken this process to having physiotherapy. So at the moment, I've got a bad back. I've got sciatica, which is linked to emotion as well. And I'm working with my physiotherapist and we are working literally on training the nerve because it's not the muscle, it's the nerve to go further than what it feels comfortable doing. And it's really weird because you think you can't, you resist and then you relax into the pain and then you've got a little bit more give and then you do the same process. It's about relaxing into the pain and then the pain disappears because the mind is going, oh, this is safe. And I will come on to my next point about that. Um, Da, 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 da. Yes, two words in your head that you need to carry around with you if you are an anxiety sufferer, and that is courage and bravery. Courage and bravery. And one of the, actually, I'll give you a little nugget. David In David Hamilton's book, he talks about body language and he talks about adopting the Wonder Woman stance. So before I go and do, a, do my public speaking, I always stand with my hands on my hips standing tall, tricking my mind into believing that I am confident. So it's a good little trick um, that you can do. Even if you don't feel it, eventually you will feel it. And they've tested the saliva and um, there's lower levels of stress hormones in people who stand like this for two minutes. So it's definitely worth doing that, adopting great body language. Um, okay then, so the things that I'm asking you to do are about changing your conscious habits. So what I do in my work is I work with people's subconscious minds. So we get right, right, right back to the root cause of why you believe certain beliefs, what's holding you back, what's stopping you being this wonderful person that you are, this, um, you know, person who is capable of doing all of these things. Why are you out of alignment? So I work on the subconscious beliefs that people have created and it's kind of like a shortcut. So that's why the work that I do is really powerful, but I also work with people on the conscious level as well. And these are the tips that I'm giving you now. So just wanted to let you know about that. There's kind of two ways of working on this, subconsciously and consciously, and it's much better if you do the both combined. Step number four, you must celebrate your achievements. And there is real reason for this. Once you've done that thing that scares you and you've survived, you must celebrate the heck out of it, okay? You've got to be really, really, really proud of yourself and you've got to make yourself feel good about it, okay? Now, I'm not talking about rewarding yourself with a Magnum ice cream or a packet of Doritos or um, a, a massive meal out at the, at the Hungry Horse. <laughs> and um, as you said, Mike, is that psychodynamics? I don't know what psychodynamics is exactly. I'm not a psychodynamics practitioner. I do rapid transformational therapy, but it, it sounds like it could be. I will do a little research um, after this live and I'll let you know if it's similar. Um, it's mind-body connection anyway, so it's, it's probably similar. Um, right, celebrating your achievements. Yeah, don't reward yourself with things that you know are not good for you. You reward yourself with words, okay? You tell people about your achievements, why you're proud of yourself, and you write it in this group with the hashtag proud of me. You spout it everywhere, why you are proud of yourself. And the reason being is because your mind only responds to words and pictures, okay? So it always believes what you are telling it. And the more you tell it that you are proud of yourself, that will release um, soothing chemicals in your body. And that will then help you to link getting out of your comfort zone with pleasure rather than with pain. 
See where I'm getting at here? <laughs> so that's why it is important to reward yourself through soothing words, not, not, you know, cake or coffee or alcohol. Soothing words will reinforce, it's called positive reinforcement, so that you link pleasure to growth rather than pain, okay? So that's step four. Step five is basically repeat steps one to four. <laughs> You repeat, you repeat, you repeat, you do this daily, you do this hourly, you do this every minute of the day, okay, where you are, and this is what athletes do, this is what people at the top of their game do all of the time, they are constantly um, figuring out where the fear is, and then jump that hurdle, where, and then celebrate, where's the fear, where's the fear, where's the fear, and it never goes away, like I said earlier because we're human and it's all part of being human. So I want you to know that change is absolutely available to you if you follow these steps. If you can't quite work out how to fit these steps into your particular issue, then do write to me, send me a private message or post on the group because it might help other people. Um, I want you to know that change is absolutely available to you. I know from first-hand experience, you would not believe how much of an anxiety sufferer I used to be. Oh my God, I will tell my story in this Facebook group. Um, I won't do it today because um, I don't want it to go on forever, but I will tell my story. And I mean, I couldn't even get on a bus and go into town. I couldn't go to any social situation. I passed out at my 40th birthday because there were too many people in the room and I didn't know what I was supposed to say to anybody. So I know that, that change is available to you no matter how bad you think your anxiety is. So I would like to offer you guys a little challenge to go through some of these steps or to go through all of these steps and then report back on this page if you want to do it. It's a great way to get you started. I'm here to support you if you want to ask me any questions. So let's just recap what those steps are. Step number one, what are you moving away from? What are you trying to avoid? Step two, what do you want instead? Get really specific. Move your mind towards what you want, not on what you're fearing. Then do it. <laughs> Do it, do it, do it, accept it, don't resist it, allow fear, cope, breathe into it, tell yourself a positive story about the truth of the situation, adopt your power poses, read that book, I Heart Me, there's lots and lots and lots of stuff in there, I can also give you more. Then you celebrate your wins by verbalising, okay, not by eating cake, because that's going to make it worse. And you repeat, 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 repeat. Yeah, training that muscle is just like going to the gym. Anxiety, if you think of anxiety or depression as kind of being very overweight, you've got to train yourself it back into peak mental fitness, right? You're not on your own. We all suffer from this and we, um, we're all here to support you. So, I just want to finish off by saying, um, by letting you know how I can support you further. So I, um, you can work with me basically for three months, two months, one month, or you can have a taster session. And in three months, I deal with three major issues, two months, two issues, one month, one issue. You can either have it done, um, you can either come to me face to face in Brighton, or we can do it via Zoom. And I do, um, the packages that I offer involve rapid transformational therapy, it's hypnosis, I call it hypnosis on steroids, it's amazing, um, coaching, and um, there's some bonus sessions in there to teach you how to breathe, fantastic, wonderful Qigong exercises to help you move and transform energy through the body, emotional release sessions, and anything else that I learn We'll go into those coaching sessions with you. I'll also support you doing something that really scares you. We'll work out what it is and we will do it. 
to prove to your mind that you can do this process and then you know you just do it a little bit more often a little bit more often and then you'll feel comfortable doing it so um, I haven't actually launched these packages yet so um, uh, I'm doing a pre-launch deal at the moment 50% off the link is in the description if you want to have a little nosy on my website you can see the package prices there um, they're heavily reduced for a limited time only um, I would be honored to work with you to help you smash this anxiety shit <laughs> um, and to feel fantastic about yourself because that's who you are I know it. I'm so passionate about seeing people's potential, about working with people's potential and helping them to realise their potential. Because us human beings, we're bloody amazing, you know that. We really, really are. I just wish that we could all see it sometimes. And let's support each other because that is what we need. The more support, the less anxiety. So I'm here for you. Give me a shout. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining me. Mike, I'm going to answer your question. Is that psychodynamics in a minute? And please, please invite people to this group if you know anyone else that's suffering with anxiety. Lots of love. I'm going now, guys. Big, big kiss to you. See you next time. Bye.